Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and if you remember from the last couple of tutorials, I did a GUI button and a GUI label. So the issue is, if I press play, that's when they show, and I can't really see that here um, inside of uh, just my normal screen without having to play inside of my, I don't know what to call a scene view. So what I want to do is there is a special case up here. If I put a open square bracket and type in execute and edit mode at the top of the label and save that out, when I jump back you will notice, there we go, it says hello Danielle right there, we don't have to hit play and I can see it and test it. And I can do the same thing with the button, so if I copy this and paste it over here, save it out, jump back, there we go, now I can see the button. and Obviously I can't click it because I'm not playing. But now I can see and position it wherever I want. So, uh, a tip and tr some tips and tricks for this is that um, we will want to add a actual button onto here uh, to allow us to kind of do a debug mode. So, since uh, these UIs Actually, I'm just going to keep it simple. I don't need to do polymorphism or anything like that. So, let's make a public bool. Public bool. And let's call it debug mode is equal to false. And we will copy this to our other script. Save that. And what we want to do is wrap our entire uh, on GUI uh, equal to, uh, let's just say, uh, if debug mode or uh, application dot playing then we can show it just so that uh, while we're debugging we can switch on and off so we don't have to see it all the time so let's copy this paste it and wrap it around our other GUI function now we'll be able to jump back you'll see that they disappear but what I can do is I can select my cube which seems to have moved I can select my cube and you can see now there's buttons for debug mode if I check that on it'll pop up and that'll pop up so if you don't want to worry about this stuff right now you could uh, skip that step but for you guys who want to test things and uh, be able to view them at certain times and make them disappear at others uh, there is this debug mode now that we can check on and off and see them change in real time so uh, that's a tip and trick on how to get these things showing up. I want to go over one more thing on tips and tricks. The next tick, tip and trick is to make your rectangle public. So let's just say public rect. Let's call this um, position. Um, let's just leave it at position. And we can set that equal to new rect. Let's just make it what I have here. I could probably just copy this down here. I'm going to cut this out, paste it up here, and then I'm going to take this position variable and put it down where I had the original rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one, so I'm just going to copy this, paste it up here underneath the button. I'm going to cut out this new rectangle, paste it over this one, and paste position down into where that button's rectangle should be. Now, when I go back to press play, Oh, I don't even need to press play, sorry. What I can do is, since I'm in debug mode and I can see these things, what I can do is change the position and width in real time and see how things act, how they move. I can place them myself. I can move it down on the Y. Say I want it a little bit further, like somewhere right there. And the height is needs to be shorter and the width a little bit shorter. Uh, then I can do the same thing for the text. I'm going to, I, if I reduce the width, you can see it starts cutting off. But I can also move the position, say I want it over there. And for this, the label itself, I can also add another public oops, public string uh, text is equal to, let's put it to hello Danielle. And then I can take that text and paste it in where the string would be in the label. Now not only can I move the position of the, uh, the text, I can change the text in real time and see it change. I can delete it out, I can say hello there Danielle, 
you can see it got cut off. Now I can change the width till it pops back up, and there we go. So now I am able to change things dynamically without playing and edit them almost as if I have my own personal little editor inside of the game. So in the future tutorials, I'm going to go over some uh, layouts and other things that I promised in the last ones, fonts and all of that. So um, I hope this helps out, and until next time, I will see you there.